losing time, I'm fading fast I just wanna make it last Try to let go of the past I close my eyes, embrace the blast Sleepless nights and headaches stack Restlessness to hell and back What's my purpose, what do I grab? A slippery surface, a heart attack And sometimes you just gotta believe There's something that'll give you relief There's something that'll have what you need what you need. Hello, it's Maxine. This is probably going to be even more of a disaster than usual. I haven't had coffee yet, but I just don't feel like making tea and I'm going to go and take a little drive for a coffee once I do this. Anyway, I know my last video was like so long and like <laughs> got um pretty deep I guess I'm I'm sort of like still feeling the effects of like taking that video like I didn't um continue on that day and this um <laughs> this lip balm is like bugging me um <clears throat> Yes, I'm a freaking weirdo. Anyway, <laughs> I just feel the effects of that from the other day. Like, I almost felt like it was, like, sort of in a daze yesterday for some reason. And, um, I don't know what the term for that is, but I guess I was just thinking that it is a lot to, um, overshare with strangers. And especially when I don't, like, have, like, a super big following yet of, pe like, no one consistently anyway like I'm getting most of my followers there are from like year, a couple years of like uploading short videos only so there's no one there who's really like interested in me and my content it's like they're just there for the kind of funny goofy short videos which is totally okay too it's just that um it does feel a little strange to just share with um not really having like I mean there's some friends of mine who are there and here <laughs> anyway look I did my makeup pretty extreme today it was finally all done and looking like pretty nice and then I just did my eyeliner so bad I had to like take it off and then I just threw all this on to kind of hide what I had done but it looked a lot like more pink and just like nice subtle black line and it turned into um <laughs> like a pop metal chick or something <laughs> but anyway um today I'm going to try to since I did get that off my chest. Maybe it feels like a weight's off at the same time, but also I was feeling kind of numb by oversharing, but um, since that's kind of off my chest and shoulders and whatever, <laughs> um, I think I'll be able to like focus a bit more on just autis autism specifically and and I'll quickly read a list of like kind of other subjects. I keep saying that I'm going to talk about other things, but I made a list of things that other videos I want to make. So weight loss, keto, like my experience with that and what I'm trying now, um, diabetes, maybe more about my childhood, um, surgery that I've had before, eating disorders medical treatments and diagnoses and fibromyalgia. There's some other fun, <laughs> other fun, other things that are a little lighter, like, like concerts and hobbies and special interests. And, um, I want to talk about like my psychic moments. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> I, I don't know. It's kind of a lot less these days, but I used to have like these like dreams and things that would actually happen, like really trippy things or like, you know, you think of someone you haven't seen 
in a long time and all of a sudden like that week or it could be that day and you see them just really strange things like that and um and they say that like there's this trend that says like that women long ago who, autistic women long ago in history were witches <laughs> so i i enjoy that <laughs> i <laughs> It's hard not to judge myself or I want to say something harsh and whatever, but I have like witchy features, <laughs> like not the beautiful bewitched type of witch. Like I have like the pointy nose and my chin. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> I'm a true witch. <laughs> At least I'm not a bitch unless you make me. <laughs> anyway, um, let's see. I was gonna maybe talk about my cats and dogs and, and then biking and sports, like things that I did actually enjoy at a time or was like horrible at. <laughs> And maybe some, like, friendships and relationships talk, too, like, from the past. And kind of, I'll, like, be linking it to autism or just my experience as a human. And um, and then I really thought maybe I should be adding online dating on there, too, because I'll just say in brackets, I put, there's guys on there ruining it for you good guys. And that's freaking true. Like, there, I had a lot of guys who would I like in the beginning when I was on there I just had like say for example someone from my high school or something like messaged me and I had no interest in dating them um I would just like gently shut them down and then this guy's like oh that's why you're single you're like fat or something it's like you were just calling me sexy and like was trying to get me to come hang out with you and I rejected you and now you're throwing insults and that was quite early on but there were other guys that I just messaged repeatedly 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 for freaking years and it's like it's like they wouldn't take no as an answer and like then people would make fake accounts and message me horrible things or like like and then some people would message like in great detail about See, here I go. I'm trying to do autism today, not this, but <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, online dating can be pretty awful sometimes and, and, you know, and that's just me, like, and I didn't always look like, I wasn't always this big, like, but. I mean, that has nothing to do with it, but it's just, like, I don't know what I'm thinking about that, but it's just, like, I think it's anxiety, right, and that's why I'm, like, stalling and, like, doing this with my hands. It's just, it, there were some good moments on it, but, and then there was a lot of the years where I just didn't. I was really, like, looking for someone's specific, like, call it picky, call it whatever. But if I was talking to someone and there were red flags right away, then I wouldn't proceed, but it wouldn't bother to meet them. Like, it wasn't as fun for me, like, as some girls and guys enjoy dating. They just like talking to anyone and everyone. And But I would, if things didn't seem like they would align in the future, like, if we didn't have common interests or the same beliefs and things I just thought there was like no point so sometimes I'd spend a day talking to a guy and then I'd kind of decide oh yeah I'm not really interested in meeting and this guy like just anyway like there are a couple guys like that who would just freak out if I it's like they thought I owed them sex or something for talking to them for a day like pretty horrible shit like that and Oops, 
I'm sure supposed to not be swearing. <laughs> um, oh, there was one more thing I wanted to say about that before I go on to autism. So, rejecting and... Oh, yeah, I have to save it for a different video because, like, I'll be able to... And at times, like, I would screenshot, like, certain weird messages or if someone was really rude or whatever to kind of, like, jog my memory if, like... Because some of the time they would do that. They'd say, like, you're this, you're that. And then six months later, they're, like, coming trying to message again. And I had to, like, start screenshotting because it's, like, I wanted to remind myself, like, who was like that. And... Anyway, I just think for the average girl on blind dating can be pretty scary and but even for us fat ugly <laughs> girls or whatever too it's not There's a lot of nice guys on there too and I'm sorry but there's a lot of assholes on there ruining it for you and I'm I'm sure some girls can just kind of like move on from that and separate the two and just continue on dating and have fun but I when those things would happen it would kind of just make me not want to put in the effort and then I spent a lot more time on there just kind of oh one other thing I wanted to say like when when so red flakes for example like if I kind of said ask the person if they like doing social things like outside of the home for example and they would say like oh no not really I don't like big gatherings or something like that's completely fine but I personally would just like to date someone who does like getting out of the house like I know a lot of autistic people don't and or homebodies or with anxiety and stuff but I do like to at times get out and in large gatherings even like whether it be a concert or I'm from Manitoba so socials was a thing and and you know like movies and other things um and then so I kind of think well is this gonna work out like he's admitting to not really like enjoying doing the things I want to be able to do with a partner so I didn't and but then he'd like and then he backtracked to try to make me just, and it was like, okay, just be honest, you guys don't try to backtrack just so you get the chance to meet the girl. Like it just kind of weirds me out. Like don't, it kind of makes me think, what is the real goal then? Are you like actually looking for a partner? Are you just trying to hook up or something? But <laughs> okay. Anyway, back to autism. That's all I really want. See, it's like 12 minutes in and I'm, <laughs> I just don't want to delete it because say for example, someone's watching this and they prefer me to stay on the subject of autism. Well, there might be at least one or two people out there who'd like me to talk about online dating or dating and, and so then, you know, that's coming <laughs> and, um, yeah. shouldn't have started this video till I was on the post because then that would have been easy to stay organized. Almost there, I'm sure of it. Okay, so let's see if I can, from memory, remember where we left off, um, like, because I know I ended the last video talking about, like, childhood abuse and, um, but, okay, so it's talking about, oh, body language. So, I just... Yeah, so I said, always thought people are mad at me and had some trouble understanding body language or facial expressions mostly over this. So, yeah. 
so that's where I ended and this new part is serving pushed me way out of my shell over the years with communication and body language but the masking of it all was very harmful in many ways trying to put up the facade like I was the same as everyone else major burnout and it was always inevitable and meltdowns especially with the irregular regular schedules, bullying at times, co-workers or even employers, having to force myself to be happy, upbeat and professional at all times. I could go on. It was physically and mentally draining for most people, I'm sure, but especially those who aren't naturally outgoing and extroverted. So I feel like if I call myself an introvert, um, some people in my life would say, like, that's not true. Like, when I'm comfortable with people or it depends on the environment. Like, when I'm new to an environment, I'm really reserved and in my shell. It, it just, maybe with age, too, and then, like I said about serving, it has changed. Like, I feel like I can kind of make small talk with strangers now. I don't exactly enjoy it, but... It, um. <laughs> I don't like small talk, but, um, like, I like talking to seniors and stuff. <laughs> they always have, like, some tip to give her. <laughs> They're just, gen like, usually pretty nice, but <sighs> anyway, um, yeah, so I kind of try to see both sides. It's like, well, yes, for the average person who's not autistic, serving could be hard, but for those of us who, like, when I was a child, I was really introvert. And then once I was comfortable, I was more out of my shell and kind of would maybe even get carried away at times. Like, not with my ADHD side to me. Like, not paying attention or getting off topic or, like, whatever. But, um, like, I feel like naturally you can probably tell that I'm an introverted person. Like, I mean, my stutter and s or stammer and whatever I think that's another thing too like, <laughs> I have that but I don't even know exactly what it is like I have a lot of things and there's things I haven't even invest investigated but I know I have or like no one ever talked to me about stuttering and stuff but <laughs> I don't know maybe there's positives to that for some reason <laughs> No, actually, I probably could have benefited from seeing a speech therapist as a kid. But along with all the other things and the... Yeah, like, speech therapist was definitely never going to be on the list of things I needed. So, or what I did need and not going to get. But um, anyway, I used to ask a lot of questions as a child and was criticized for this repeatedly to the point I stopped asking questions and in many ways stopped learning the way children should be allowed. So yes, um, I remember this numerous times as a kid where, you know, kids ask questions and like adults should be able to handle kids asking questions. Like unless I know for a fact I wasn't asking the exact same question over and over and over again and getting an answer and still asking the same question. It wasn't like that. Um, cause I have known an autistic child who was like that. And that was kind of an, a cool experience. Cause I had a kid at my daycare who was autistic and this was before I even had my diagnosis. So there were things I was observing in the, it was like an older group of kids I never had before. I usually had like between probably like four or five and under to like age one or a little under. But I had uh, older kids one summer and so observing like a kid who's older with autism and amongst the others around his age, it kind I had a lot of moments where I'm like, wow, that, that was like kind of me as a kid. <laughs> and then sometimes like I would say things to them and like this sort of sing songy tune and 
I was noticing he was doing that, but then I'm like, am I copying him or is he copying me or is that just how we both are? <laughs> like, I can't really explain it, but it's kind of funny. Like, there were other things that kind of got me thinking maybe autism was more my diagnosis than anything else, but that was definitely really got me investigating all of it. Like maybe I wasn't exactly ready before. Like I would watch things like Love on the Spectrum and and then I was hearing things on TikTok and then I'm like, yeah, I relate to that. And then I'm like, whoa, with Love on the Spectrum though, actually, I have to get into it. That'll be a whole other video one day. Well, my voice is so hoarse, but <clears throat> maybe I should get water. <laughs> but I'll definitely have to make a video. Oh, I need to get water. I have a bit of water and I don't think my voice sounds much better, but it feels a little better, but I have to make a video about Love on the Spectrum someday because that is kind of maybe where it all really got started. Like even before TikTok, and I know a lot of people hate that people are self-diagnosing or whatever, but... If it's not you, it's not your business. And knowing this stuff about ourselves is really helping us. And it's going to help future generations as well. And people with autistic children. And even like... Because it's just a fact that the information wasn't there before. Or they had different names before autism. And the treatment of disabled people was really horrible in the past. And... um. Anyway, so, but yes, I have to make a love on the spectrum video because like even I could tell like there are people, a part of the show who, um, well, there's people who are obviously like savants on the show, like genius where they like can remember things really well, like his name I don't want to pronounce it wrong Sabod or Sabod like him really good with numbers and count the calendar and he could name like what day of the week it was like five years ago that kind of like really awesome talent <laughs> and then Ronan having like a million talents and but it is a spectrum right so even if some of us are considered like more independent I don't really I won't, don't want to say high functioning anymore I just want to say a little less reliant on our parents or resources but um so but there were others a part of the show where I'm like at that time in my life when that first season came out I had no idea that there were just autistic people who weren't my knowledge of autism was like at absolute zero pretty much like I in school, in high school, in college, and at work. It just really wasn't something ever talked about. And then maybe as I got older, people were talking about their children being diagnosed with autism. But my knowledge of it was still pretty limited. Um, I pretty much always reflected on this one kid in particular. So I always thought that was just what autism was because I went to a cabin one time and there was a family there and the mom was telling me about her autistic son who was with us. He was younger than me, but he was very um, hyperactive and, and uh, nonverbal. And she told me that, you know, she was really upset that he's never going to be able to tell her that he loves her and so that and that's even where her knowledge was at that point in time like say he's six years old and he's nonverbal. well what we know today is that a lot of autistic people do become verbal eventually maybe he was even younger than that actually I can't re quite remember but um a lot of autistic people do really just like me, like when I was a kid to now, it's like night and day. Like if you were, <laughs> if little me was next to me <laughs> and I was interviewing them, 
they'd have a really hard time getting their words out and they'd be really uncomfortable and they'd like almost be like sweating from like anxiety and and <laughs> that'd be cool if we can enter. oh no it makes me sad I want to like give little me a hug but anyway you I've come a, a long way too and then so to see that a lot of autistic people do come a long way and then to see people part of the show who sounded kind of just like me or any other person but they have struggles in their own way it because to me they seemed normal because I didn't know what autism was and maybe other people could pinpoint it or the differences but because I'm an autistic person I thought I don't want to like name names and I'm not trying to like I hope this doesn't come across in any way where it's like one is better versus the, ne the next that's really important for me not to sound like that and and if it does come out the wrong way like you know my intentions never to hurt anyone and not to say not like truly in my heart I don't like hurting people's feelings what I'm just trying to say is that I really identified with some of their stories and it was like whoa I just had no clue and then as the seasons went on and on I was like whoa this is me <laughs> between that and TikTok I think tick yeah anyway but I just knew that was me and then um and I think before I even got diagnosed like a year or two ago a doctor when I kind of mentioned how I think I'm autistic and this is just our initial meeting um we were going to go through all that together but um anyway he told me that at his opinion and he was a new doctor that eight ADHD and autism like pretty much go hand in hand or he even said the words that it's the same thing um some people would probably disagree with that it's not the same thing but I think some autistic people are better at um it's probably all environmental too like how you were raised and or maybe it's not I don't know there's all the factors play a part but Let's go back to the list. <laughs> I said, I'm going to make another video about that. And then I went on like a five minute talk about it. But I think that's cool. And I think a lot of people probably will agree or say that that's their experience. I know some people also don't like it and they think that like they're making really harsh judgments saying that they use like they infantize them and like the music is even childish and all this I think the show is freaking awesome like it's just because it's a bit more positive they do share their struggles too and um, maybe it because it doesn't show from what we see or what we know um, it's not showing like a really autistic person like me who has also major trauma they're not showing that type of personality but that's not the type of personality that a lot of people want to watch. No offense, but I just know that. Like, that's just... And maybe they will get more diverse in the future. Or maybe there will be a different type of show where it's like autistic, traumatized people can go on a dating show or meet friends. And again, with me laughing, I'm not trying to... I just do have major trauma and... um and again, that's like some coping mechanism and I wish I didn't do that. But anyway, see, yeah, I should have had the coffee today. <laughs> ah, I sound the same as all my other videos with or without. Um, so serving. I think I'll have to save serving for another video too, like just about the whole process and working at different places and different treatment from different employers and, and, um, yeah, 
if your kid is asking questions, please. Anyway, my dad didn't have time, like, or not time. He had no patience to. They had no business having kids, but here I am, and I just have to tell you how it is. Like, but there was no, I wasn't able to ask questions, and it was like, geez, you ask a lot of questions, and then it made me feel bad. And he had, he told me that numerous times where the, eventually it just, I stopped asking questions because it was like, he's just making me feel bad and he's not helping me learn. And I think that carried over into school. Like I wasn't being involved and I think it carried into a lot of ways actually, because I remember like being in, uh, the, the community club for before and after school or something and, and or, you know, like eventually we did get like a PlayStation or something at home. And I always just was like observing and I was never playing. I think, I don't know if I just wasn't given a chance, but I think even when I was asked if I wanted to, I would eventually just say no. Cause it was kind of part of that whole not being able to ask questions and not being able to play. Like I just felt more comfortable just observing than actually getting involved in learning and so my, I had my own interest of just like coloring and and stuff I have like a little hair <laughs> anyway um like I'm here now and like this post is a freaking long post <laughs> even like with all the, I feel like I'm only like 50% of the way of reasons why I'm autistic. I'm only 50% of the way and we're already video four now. This is being recorded for video four and the first three videos, even though they get off topic, but it's all in all like how many hours now? <laughs> so yeah, it's very complex and, but it is important because for those who maybe possibly will watch my video who aren't autistic, they don't really have autistic friends, they don't have autistic children, or they're just curious, at least they'll kind of get a really in-depth look at what it's like for one autistic person. And I'm not every person out there, everyone's needs and everyone's abilities and everyone's stims and everyone's everyone's story is different, of course, so... Um, uh, many stims, repetitive movements, even thoughts or, and words. So sometimes when I hear a word I don't use very often, I'll like say it out loud a few times again and again, and then sometimes in my head, but sometimes things or certain phrases or even songs do kind of get trapped in like a loop and re on repeat. I think I saw a TikTok recently where there's an actual word for this and I'm going to stop saying I saw this and, but I know that there is a actual t term for these things that I do, but I wrote this before I learned about that. So, but, um, yeah, repetitive movements, um, even thoughts and words. So I kind of explain that. I wish I could come up with a better example of, but like, obviously the stimming you see in the video, but, um, like even at bed, at bed at night, I do, I think they call it cricket feed or something <laughs> or <laughs> cricket. Hmm. I don't know what they call it, but anyway, like I rub my feet together. It's, it's like a self soothing thing. The thing, some people are going to say, I don't think you have autism and I think you just have CPTSD because CPTSD has a lot of, um, autistic things like stimming can be like self, self soothing. So if you have anxiety or just any time really when you're doing like repetitive things or if I'm going like this, it's kind of like self soothing. I am autistic anyway, but I just want to kind of explain that a bit more. Um, but let 
many stings, thoughts, words. I have a, like a more in-depth, um, see, so like the out of sight, out of mind thing, I can't even quite explain my many repetitive movements right now, but well, for one example, I used to have long hair when I was young and I was like picking my, I don't know if this is a repetitive movement or just an OCD or just a thing, but, or part linked to trauma, but I was like picking split ends. Like people will remember this about me, but from, I don't know what year it was, if it was like grade five or six and then all the way, even into college at times, I just could not help myself. Like I was hardly ba paying attention and hardly learning, or maybe I was just listening and doing it, but it's good that I have short hair because I haven't been able to do this for like two years now at least. And when I was in my daycare years and even a little bit before that into serving, like it definitely became less and less and less, thankfully. But like imagine from grade, we'll say five to 19 years old. And even when I went back to college years and years later for massage therapy, I'll have to talk about that in another video. But I think I w did it at times there too, but I tried not to, but, um, yeah, I think that was one of, it was actually something I saw my mom do when I was little and then she cut her hair. So it was too short for her to be able to do that. But me seeing her do that and then started that got me in that trend for freaking most of my childhood, all of most of my childhood and into my younger adult years. So, so I'm sure in some way that's linked to autism, like monkey see monkey do. And then I cannot stop myself from doing it, I guess. GI issues, so gut health. Um, I think a lot of autistic people have like that. And I think I have to save that for another day, um, for another video. But that is common amongst autistic people and then eating disorders that I'm going to have to save that for another video too. But a lot of, um, autistic people have that. And a lot of, like when I was young, I was a really picky eater with some things like mainly meat, like bones and <laughs> anything like that. <laughs> Ooh, makes me squirm even thinking about it. Like, <laughs> Yeah, so, <laughs> well, because I've been, like, vegetarian, vegan, and pescatarian, and there was a little point in the last few years where I was eating meat again, but for the most of my life, like, from all the way, like, from 14, 15 years old to now being 34, like, 20 years, <laughs> holy crap. <laughs> yeah, for 20 years, I only really ate fish and veggies and fruits and all the grains and things, but not meat. So not, yeah. Anyway, eating disorders, um, eating disorders I'll have to put in with weight loss. Cause when I first lost the big bulk of weight, when I was in high school, like going from 230 pounds to 230 pounds to 160 is when the eating disorder started. Like you know, when I would cheat, I'd feel so guilty. I started puking and there were a lot of times I was starving myself. So when I was young, I had food problems in a different way. But then once I got into the eating disorders time in my life, then I was purposely starving or I wouldn't, I like would never eat around people, like usually like around my friends and and I used to have like really strong beliefs about things like whether... Like, I, like a lot of rules that I would set for myself, like after a bar night when we were older enough or older, like after a bar night, I wouldn't have anything there 
at McDonald's if everyone was going. Like, I used to be really strict in a lot of ways. And I'm sure people can recall me enjoying that stuff sometimes, but oh, there were a lot of... I used to have this rule for myself. I would never eat after the bar. And then <laughs> I wish I had kept that rule. But um, anyway, obvious social issue issues do much better in one-on-one -on -one conversation instead of groups. So like I have had a lot of friends in my life, thankfully, and like I said about sort of living at their homes in parts of my life, but I tend to, in groups, I always did worse or even in a group of three, I always felt like the other two people were way more connected if they weren't autistic, especially now that I see it that way and not not being severely abused at home and stuff, but, um, I definitely tried, to, not tried, but I just did really, like, I did a lot better one-on-one, -on -one. and I, it doesn't mean I wouldn't enjoy parties or I wouldn't enjoy a crowd. Sometimes I just didn't do well at all in that, or people were include, including me, or, um, or just being overstimulated by the noise and the talking and the music and the lights or um like I really do like concerts but it, I guess it's because it's like if I'm going to a concert I'm going to a band I really like and maybe that band their music really helped me when I was young so going to concerts was like definitely an outlet like even for stimming like being able to like but I have light sensitivity in other ways like um I used to get, like, headaches from, like, lights and sounds and smells and stuff when I was young. Not sounds, but... Anyway, um... Let's see. Many struggles in professional, personal, intimate relationships. And, like, most people living with autism struggle with... Yeah, it's just the maintenance period and then it's like relationships specifically has to be its own video because like there were times that I don't know, there were a lot of times where I felt like I was the only one reaching out and making an effort and and I don't know why I was like holding on to these toxic relationships, like where the person's really even not that nice for you or to you or is not making the effort or not, or like making, like, I, I don't know why I was hanging on to these toxic relationships. And I think a lot of that has to do with my dad, probably like if I grew up and that was the environment and, and I don't know, but like these fucking leechy people latched on to me too. Like these soul suckers, like people kind of enjoyed making me like the, like enjoyed making fun of me and putting me in this category. And, but it, like after that, like in relationships, it always seemed like the people who are like coming to me to try to like it's like to use me intimately or in other ways but like what they say about like sociopaths or psychopaths or something it's like they see the weakness in you and like that's what they go for or something but it has made me stronger in some ways. Like now I'm pretty much like a no BS type of person. Like it, that will keep me single for forever probably. Cause I will like, I won't even continue on if there's like red flags or if things just don't align or like, I know relationships, healthy relationships, there's always going to be times that you can kind of like work through it. And, but, um, who knows? I've been really single for quite a long time and I have almost never really had like a huge interest in dating. Like I was in the online 
dating groups, but I don't know if it's in combination with my experiences and then how they were or, but I know before I said like, I'm bi-curious, but I don't actually think so. Unfortunately, I mean, I'm straight. <laughs> I wish I was a freaking lesbian. I think I would have, I think I could fall in love with a lesbian, but that other component, I don't <laughs> like, I could probably f fall in love with a woman, not a, a woman and raise a family and <laughs> travel the world and like raise a child. But I, I still like men. <laughs> anyway, any lesbians out in the world or asexual people out in the world who wants all those things, but doesn't want the intimate factor <laughs> can reach out to me. I actually, I had this moment where like, cause I had a successful daycare for four years. So what, like whatever opinion you're getting from me in these videos, you're probably wondering how is that possible? But at times when it comes to certain things, I'm like really confident, like maybe more confident, confident than the average person, but I know what I'm good at. And, and I always wanted a family like growing up but, and I just don't know if that's going to be happening for me at this age. And, and with my issues in actual intimate relationships and my mom has said, like, I always just thought you'd probably end up having a kid regardless of if you, um, like has no faith in me to actually meet anybody. But <laughs> anyway, uh, there's a lot of animals in the animal kingdom who raise kids. They're young all on their own, like bears and I think cheetahs. And, but lately or recently I was at the IMAX and they said otters raise their young fem like female otters raise their young alone. And I went, oh, I'm an otter mom. <laughs> I'm going to identify as an otter mom one day. Maybe I'll have a child and I'm going to just raise them independently, but that's probably another video for another day too, because I just don't know now. Um, even if I got back to work, I'm su successful at a job and I'm there for years and I just don't have that support system that a child deserves. Like, I mean, every child deserves to have their father too, or t if it's two mothers or two fathers, you know what I mean? But not just that, but I don't have that support system. I don't have the grandparents. I don't have the cousins and the, I have some few friends in my life, thankfully. And, but some of them are back in Manitoba. And then I don't know. I just don't have that support system where I can like truly trust and rely on somebody to be able to like raise a child. And I know there's some moms, awesome hardcore badass moms out there who like have raised their kids and they've barely had a had help but it's kind of like if something bad ever happened I we'll just have to see who knows what the future has in stores there there's autistic guys maybe a lot like me and we could still happily raise a child and I'm definitely doing a lot of judge judge like judging a lot my own thoughts on this and thinking how other people are going to judge me but even like, it doesn't even really matter what anyone else thinks like my home daycare was so amazing and I had some of those kids for two and a half years like and I had them five days a week for four years and with very few breaks in between. So I know I'm capable of being a mom and I had like, uh, like up to four kids at a time all on my own without the experience of actual motherhood, just from years of babysitting and stuff. So I definitely know I'm capable. I just, I guess, obviously now is not the right time. Like living in a trailer, but there were times in my life where I really thought that maybe, I, maybe I'd even foster or adopt 
fostering would have been awesome because I had my home daycare and we had extra rooms, but with the relationship with my mom being what it was, it was like, I just need to get out of here and start over and start fresh and have my own place because our relationship was toxic at times and that will have to be another video too, like the complexities of my mom and my relationship because it's like she's been there for me and she's helped me but there's the there's the resentment there's the trauma there's the triggers and there's this inability to really it kind of just feels sometimes where it's like well I've said my apologies and I've moved on like she's completely moved on and I'm here I'm suffering today because of all of it and oh, anyway to this so um so I had mentioned like about dyslexia like that has to that was overlooked and it has to be a fact because I'm telling you that I'm like writing words putting one letter before the other quite often like if I'm maybe I'll do it one day I'll even test it with you I'll like write what I see on the screen and then I'll show you where the mistakes are if I can or Every time I do that, where I put the letter before the first letter, I'll move on from the full word and we'll see how many times. Because that was something that happened a lot. And But oddly enough, like when I got into school for massage therapy, I was pretty good at writing some of the words. Like, I can't come up with an example right now but like when you break down the word and it has all of its meaning and a really long word like I just remember doing really good on one of their spelling tests somehow <laughs> I kind of surprised myself on like really long long words <laughs> but anyway um and a huge problem with math and I mean if I'm reading the numbers backwards and I'm struggling with math I don't know what the problem is for having with if it's still dyslexia or if it's called something else. I can't remember, but um, I don't know if it's auditory neur neuropathy, um, but I was trying to look for the word, but I only just learned about this and it was a big aha moment. I have a hard time hearing words and songs, even songs I've heard a million times. I don't know the words to it. So I'm not saying the full song, but there's songs that everybody knows and popular songs I know. And then I've heard, heard like a thousand times and I still cannot hear certain parts of the song. It's like, I'm more of the beat person, like the beat and the rhythm and all of that. And I just cannot hear the <laughs> the words for some reason so I was saying I was testing my hearing and I'm not deaf but I've always had that problem with words in so if somebody knows what that's called <laughs> you can include that but it's kind of like um you know on Ellen's show and I never, I didn't watch it that much. This is really sad, but I'm trying to remember what the other DJ was before Switch. Is his name Switch? Did he commit suicide recently? Like, that is the freaking saddest thing. Oh my god. Was his name Tony, the guy before? Anyway, they played this game with him where he would have to, like, sing the lyrics to it, it seems pretty kind of mean and humiliating but I have that problem where it's like if someone made me sing the some popular song that everyone knows the words to I most likely wouldn't know and it's not like and even songs I do like like I I for one example like I really love the band Alexis on Fire and I felt like their music really helped me get through dark times when I was a teen and going to their concerts was always so awesome. And I've, I've actually like traveled far and wide to see them at times. Like for their, the first time was I went to their show in Toronto, their farewell tour when they broke up or 
called it quits. And anyway, um, but I, like, I <laughs> the meaning of songs and the meaning of words and then not being able to hear, I have to like really read the lyrics to understand. And I've kind of just never been that person where I obsess with the band and then I want to know all their birthdays and want to know all their intimate details and then, and, but I don't even really look up lyrics that much either. It's like, kind of, I just enjoy the vibe of the song where I can somewhat understand the meaning and, but I, even though I'm such a fan and I, <laughs> I will admit here and now that I do not know the every word to every song because it's just one of my struggles but anyway um so I don't um I don't know a full song unless I read the lyrics I don't have hearing loss necessarily I do have mild tinnitus probably from all the years I've abused my ears at concerts and clubbing. Yes. Diagnosis number 52. I like have tinnitus where it's like you hear that kind of that radio sound where it's like, you know, that sound where after a concert, if you're not wearing earplugs and it's just so loud, but you go to bed and it's like better the next day. Like I just do get that at times. And what's interesting is Maybe it's getting better or something because when I'm sitting here right now, it probably, I can hear like birds chirping outside and stuff, but sometimes it's really bad and sometimes it's not so bad, but sometimes it almost comes on like a switch, like it comes on and it sounds like a radio or I don't, a signal. I don't know how to describe it, but, um. I just said probably from all the years I've abused my ears at concerts and clubbing. So that's true too. I probably did add abuse to what I already had or I just said, but anyways, this is another interesting aspect of myself and I'm not sure if it's autistic related, but you can imagine how it affects my ability to hear words and songs and you can imagine how it affects my life in other aspects, especially when younger. I think this possibly affects spelling and speech. So yeah, if you're having trouble being able to like understand, it's not understand the meaning, it's just understanding the words. Maybe from there I'd be able to come up with the meaning. I tend to come up with my own meaning for a lot or like if there's a quote, I always see alternative meanings and a lot of people it seems are like near neurotypical people know just the the traditional meaning of it but um anyway so I said so many other things I honestly contemplate making a book if I do one day it would be to help others who are like me who are into adulthood and late diagnosed and really just for anyone young and old for parents too to talk about struggles I've overcome, still deal with, and how we can all do better not to judge others for their mental health and intellectual disabilities, myself included. Sometimes I catch myself saying something or a TikTok will pop up of someone going through a mental health crisis. I really wish people would stop exploiting others who are going through a mental health crisis, especially on social media. Like that can happen to every single one of us. And some of these people making these comments, you're going to have kids someday and maybe they're going to become an addict. I'm sorry, but it's going to happen to a lot of people and maybe even me someday, but that could be your child. And are you going to be laughing when your child's on the street, not themselves because, and sometimes it's not even drug or alcohol related. Sometimes it's just comes on for other reasons. And I just really wish anytime I see a video pop up on my TikTok lately where they're like clearly exploiting somebody who just for views and likes, like if they're adding a video of even a Karen being like, really, you think that's, you think that she's made it like 60 years into her life, always acting like that. She probably is going through something. I'm always trying to 
put myself in their shoes. Like they could be in a real crisis and it's not who they are. Like we need to just remind ourselves that what you see, it could be any of us anytime. Like sometimes you have a stroke or sometimes you have a seizure and it can completely change who you are or, you know, so it can happen to any one of us and we shouldn't be exploiting for likes and freaking comments and views. I guess in some places you get money depending on how much views and whatever you get. So I guess if the almighty dollar is linked to it, then that's the reason. But I just find that really sad and holy shit, we're 40 minutes in. I think I'm going to be able to get through this list today though. So, um, Yeah, I just said it's becoming too common nowadays with today's technology and people are going to begin to not want to go out in public at all for the fear of being recorded, just living their lives and enjoying themselves or for fear of experiencing a meltdown. Like I'm a big girl and I'm fat and I'm overweight, I'm obese, whatever, but there, there's a lot more times lately where I feel like I'm being recorded or something like, and that's not a paranoid thing. It's like the camera's facing at me and, and I, like where I'm living now, like, like I was saying before, like being overweight this bad is not very common. And I've been at the mall before and it's like, I swear some, like I'm hearing people judge me. Like, I don't want to say what I've heard, but it's like, one day I'm just gonna freaking like call them out and say, what was that? Or something. Cause I don't know. I'm trying not to be confrontational and I haven't ever been and I maybe do have it wrong sometimes, but it's becoming really a lot more common. Like, I don't remember. I mean, I wasn't always this big either, but I just don't remember that happening to me a lot when I lived in Winnipeg. Zena, what are you doing? You are so foot. She keeps licking her foot. Oh. He's so cute. Um. <sighs> People are going to be afraid of going out in public for fear of being recorded, just living their lives and enjoying themselves or fear of experiencing a meltdown. So yeah, I worry about some of those people that are being exploited or maybe even having like an autistic meltdown for some reason and so it's really awful that that's happening and so the next one is autism is common but there is a huge disconnect for many of us who didn't have the right support or guidance growing up to the way some people with autism turned out to be with the right support guidance and acceptance I truly believe that and I'm not saying that every person who didn't grow up in like a positive good household doesn't have their struggles like that's definitely not what I mean I just think that I can almost really like see it like a painting that or you know even what they say if they say they have a good relationship with their family and they reference their parents a lot and you can kind of just see it in there it doesn't mean they don't struggle but they have this positive or a lot clearer of a thinking process or something or you know they mention they've been sent to college or university and their parents paid for it or things like that I wish I had had um I just do think that there's a there's obviously a disconnect like if you're an abused person and you have CPTSD it's gonna affect everything but so I do wonder sometimes if like those people look if the people who haven't been through that look at someone like me and are really judging harshly but believe me I wouldn't want to be it's hard enough being autistic like when you add CPTSD to the list it like I wish I could be happy and normal like everyone else like even if I was just a really happy autistic person I'd much rather take that over 
a crippling anxiety, like, depressed person. I mean, that's a given. It's just that I hope people can also understand some of us a bit better. And here's Ninja. <laughs> When I start getting feeling kind of bad, it's funny how the cats just kind of show up and make me laugh or something. <laughs> but anyway, um, almost done here and we're 45 minutes in. <laughs> People are going to say, who do you think you are? Like, are you Shane Dawson or Jeffree Star, like, having a, <laughs> a series about yourself that's, like, hours long? But whatever, like... <laughs> Like I said before, even if it just helps one person, and I know that kind of sounds corny corny and cliche, but um, I do believe that it might make someone feel less alone even, and that is a good feeling. And this, I like this little scrunchie because it says, eat me. <laughs> you go here. Ninja, watch your head. Okay, let's get through this list. Let's get under an hour, even though I'm going to add the other video I made to this, and then it's going to turn into like, oh, are you okay? An hour and a half. Um, sometimes when I'm like, oh, I want to do this fast, then my brains like it's hard to find my where I was left off and my brain's not reading just from front to front like if I start at the beginning of each sentence it's probably a good way to go but my brain's going all over the all over the letters <laughs> to look for familiarity or something but um Uh, on the ADHD side of things, I can be hyperactive, impulsive, and easily distracted. So I'm not always so kind of like serious and I'm not always so monotone. Like when I'm, sometimes when I'm hyper, I'm, I don't know, but it's not like bipolar where it goes like a week here and then I crash and then I'm depressed for a week or however they say that works they forget but it's more like in a in a moment type of thing like how I'm talking to you right now is probably not the same way that I'm talking to like my friend when I see her I'm probably more upbeat and excited to hang out and and then whatever we're doing I can be like easily amused and wowed by all the beauty of the world and things <laughs> But what I meant before where I kind of like s do see the good in things and sometimes I'm like a lot more amused and ha and get like feel good about things that are just a lot like, I don't know how to say it. It's just like the little things spark a lot of joy is what I'm trying to say, like whether it be a tree or a flower or a rock or a butterfly I see or the sun starts to shine like some it kind of puts me in this mood it's but um anxiety wise I think it's a huge aspect of autism gener generally and I think that's not all autistic people probably most but um I think it's more like fear-based or experience-based, like how we were treated and how now we're afraid to kind of be ourselves and we have to mask and all of that, but we're just who we are as people. Because even when I was, if I think of something that I'm like, well, that's probably because of that and that's probably because of that. Well, I can also think that, well, being in an environment that wasn't healthy can definitely make you anxiety-ridden when you're in a new environments, but both of them. I mean, there's a lot of kids out there too who were in those uncomfortable environments, but they weren't anxiety type of people. Like they'd still go out and they'd be the life of the party or they'd 
were had better coping skills or they had more support and anyway um Maybe he'll sit in his lap. What, Nanny? She won't come join? <laughs> and I said, and depression, I think, was mostly due to not having the knowledge, understanding about myself, or the respect and understanding of others throughout my life. I understand that well. If they didn't know exactly that I was autistic, how can you blame them? But the ugly truth is, I think most people did see differences in me that the neurotypical people and use my weaknesses as comedic relief and bullying and manipulation and this happens to many so I'm just trying to say that depression has definitely been a lot less since knowing these things about myself first reaching out for support and um and while not being at work right now definitely helps because it the second I get back into some environment and I don't know what it is yet, it's like all these things are going to come back and I'm just going to have to learn to try to apply my new coping skills to it or I don't know what, but I'm just hoping. I mean, it's hard. People say, don't think so negative. Well, I, I'm 34 years old and I've had a, quite a lot of different awesome and not so awesome experiences in my life and I just know, and everyone knows there's always someone at work who's like, the putting people down or sometimes it's a collective group like if I'm the weakest link then they're going to be making fun of me and that just does happen a lot but anyway depression has also been a lot less since my abuser died too and I know that's sounds really cruel but when your abuser dies it's like finally like a relief like they're not coming back and and I have had dreams where it's like they're not actually dead and they're going to come back and my cat's getting really hyper. I've had dreams where they come back and they take all of this away from me and they didn't actually die. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it's really stressful because it just feels so real for some reason. So it's definitely probably PTSD related, but anyway dreams have been a lot less lately so that's good but um anyways I said if I had gotten help earlier in life things probably would have turned out a lot differently for me but I guess everything happens for a reason so better late than never <laughs> like <laughs> like what people have kind of tried to say to me to try to just get me to move on with my life when it's like you've freaking have no clue what you're saying like you did you go through it like did you walk my life and like people cannot put themselves in other people's shoes sometimes it seems so when people use really corny quotes like that like I know sometimes they just mean well but sometimes it's like you have no freaking idea and maybe even if I told you certain aspects of the abuse or being autism or being autistic you just don't Like, please don't use thing, quotes like that. Like, if somebody's expressing to you that something is really hard and difficult, like, please just be there to listen and don't. I'm definitely learning more and more to, like, I'll say a lot less when someone tells me something like that and, and definitely not try to, like, um, relate to them as much, like, with a personal story like I used to do that a lot a lot like I said in the previous video but um anyways the pos positive side is that learning about my diagnoses and myself has been a journey of acceptance and I feel a lot happier having answers to all the struggles I faced like, yes, finally, everything makes sense. In a strange way, I also feel good. It feels good knowing that I'm not alone. With that self-acceptance, depression is a lot less common for me these days. Living in beautiful BC helps with that, too. So true. 
I not I know not everyone can get to BC, but I was thinking of seeing the other day. And don't take my advice. I'm not actually giving this, but it's like life is so short. Like if you have to live in a one bedroom with four people, just get out here if you want to. If that's what you're dreaming about, just do it. It's not like it's gonna be easy, but <sighs> It's just a healthier way of life for some, some of us. But, like, I'm doing things that I never used to do, like kayaking and going in the sea. And it's like, there's a lot of health benefits to going in salt water and stuff. But anyway, um, the dogs are probably ready to go outside, but I'm almost done here. Um... I just put, this took a lot because a lot of this I haven't shared with a single soul and a lot of it was, hi Baba, Baba hasn't been here, <laughs> oh, he hasn't been in the family yet, <laughs> Baba I'm almost done, <laughs> this took a lot because a lot of this I haven't shared a single soul and a lot of it was I was ashamed of or embarrassed, but the most, the only way to help change the world and make life better for other neurodivergent people is to be open and honest and discuss these things. So, oh, it's their dinner time, that's why. You guys hungry? <laughs> Everyone's hungry. Yeah, time for dinner? <laughs> But, um, let's see. Yeah. So, that's done. <laughs> There's a couple other Facebook posts, um, that I'm going to do, but not today. But, uh, just an example, um, I kind of just talked about I made a post saying that I was going to do a book and and then when I did do that uh, I did start doing like <laughs> actually writing a book last October and I got like I was just so hyper focused and so I really wanted to do this <laughs> like about autism and abuse and everything and um oh my gosh they're <laughs> Hey, what are you doing? Are you hyper? <laughs> anyway, um, I, yeah, I guess I'll kind of get into this post about, I was going to make this book and then I thought, I guess I got to this point where I'm like, maybe if I just do this on YouTube, like it's definitely going to, I may still do the book, but doing YouTube like in some way might reach more people because Nowadays, a lot of people like me are struggling financially and like, can we be even afford to buy a, a book? No. So here's some like, some, even though the delivery of me writing is a lot different than me talking, this is why I kind of do want to do it one day, but we'll see. But, um, so there was that post that I'll do another day and maybe tomorrow. And the last one was, oh, there's one really deep one I'm going to share too. And it's about just being a girl and the, um, the harassment that girls face. I mean, I know boys do too and males, but we all know that girls get like sexually harassed a lot more um just in everyday life growing up like being a young girl like and how they even want you to dress and act and in relationships and and then the, with online dating experiences I've had but I kind of this post gets really into depth in some of the experiences that I've had just so <laughs> take something serious and then add a little cattail but anyway so goodbye thank you for listening um please like and subscribe if you feel like it and I just noticed that in my 
analytics or something. It seems like some people are watching a lot of the, um, a lot of these, which is really, really cool. Even if, like, even if you're not watching the whole thing and you're watching 10 minutes and you pause and you come back to it, like, that's really awesome. And thank you so much. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.